I cooked them covered all the way through basically and then took the top, the lid off and broiled it. But we didn't like how it looked. It looked really uneven and parts were kind of burnt tasting. So and everyone's broiler is different. It's kind of an uncontrollable variable. This recipe was particularly complicated because she's making elements that need to stand alone, but also need to sing perfectly together in the final sandwich. That process of taking that working recipe, dissecting it, pulling every piece of it apart, and really zeroing in on every detail to make sure it's exactly right, that's a process. I'm gonna go back to the covered and then uncovered, but maybe less time covered. Not as much as I did two days ago where it was, wasn't covered for very long and then it dried out and then everything over reduced. And then for as far as bread goes, we were also thinking about as the bread proofs once it's shaped, sprinkling the top with flour so that it, it dries out, but then in theory there's more flour on the exterior so that if you are able to trap the steam in the oven, there's more starch to gelatinize and give you a crust. So that's a theory that we have. We feel pretty good about where the bread was yesterday. Hopefully today some of the stuff pans out. All things considered, the fact that she's working on three very intensive recipes, the pork and the, um, and the bread simultaneously. I mean, usually the cooks are assigned one of these recipes that's pretty intense. I think she's doing a great job with the timeline. She's so thorough. She, every day she's been thinking about what the next test is. She's talking to me every day. And she's, yeah, she's, she's a champ. I did that test where I was covering the bread to get initial steam. And we went the higher oven temperature. So this is kind of disappointing. The steam may have worked, I'm not sure, but when she uncovered it, she stuck to her times in the recipe instead of like continuing to bake these until they got fully browned. So there, as a result, they're definitely not going to be crisp. So with the last one at 400 degrees, I was pulling it out and then AJ was like, well, why is it so pale? And I was like, well, it's supposed to be pale. And then he was like, if it's that pale, you know, you can just leave it back in. You can leave it in and let it get to the right color. Well, that's the constant problem. I mean, especially with something like this, like we got to get through it, but you can't rush bread. You know, you want to put your hands on things and fix them right away, but honestly, you have to walk away. And uh, that's not just true here, that's true at home. At the very end, the test went kind of awry. I should have just made a game time decision and kept them in longer and then I wouldn't be redoing this now. So I lost like five hours. This is taking a lot longer than I need it to. I'm here early, I'm staying late. And when you have a test that goes awry in like the last five minutes, I mean, each component takes so long. Problem. <laughs> it's a okay. little problem. Good. Um, I will wash that. Um, <laughs> I'll just throw this thing in the trash. Punishment. <laughs> Punishment! Cheap pot anyway. This one went to 190. The other two went to 205. It looks like you got this one down pretty well. This is moist over here. They were all the same weight. 5'7. Yeah, the thing about pork butts, boneless and bone in pork butts, is they come in all different shapes and sizes. They can all weigh very similar weights, but some can be skinny and long, others can be fat and wide and tall, and they will, as a result, cook at different rates. So when Cecilia is cooking five different roasts at the same time, yeah, in theory, they're all five pounders, but they're not all cooking at the same rate. It, it sucks when you do all this work and then the test doesn't go right and then you don't even bother to call your team. So, which is what I did. I didn't bother calling them because it was all dry. I got Brian's opinion, which is what I needed. And I think, you know, it's like, why, why have them try dry pork if I can do it better? She's not a rule follower at all. 
She has a, uh, an understanding of what will work or what won't work. She's studied, she knows the traditional way to do things or the classic way to do things, but she gets, I think, like a thrill of thinking about a, a different or a better way to do things. So it's Tuesday. I've been working on this for about 15 days. Um, I should just say 20 because I've been thinking about it on the weekends too, so. I have timer for all four of those are staggered by like two minutes okay. each. And then I have two pork roasts, one's at 189 and one's at 182. No, I understand that a mojo is very traditional, but like I just keep thinking that like the pork roast that we've done with the cure and the salt overnight, so much better seasoned than this. We've had so much success in the past with just um, like a sugar salt rub overnight because the salt deeply penetrates the meat better than a marinade if it's just in a rub. So it wasn't until we decided, okay, we're really not getting anywhere with this mojo marinade. Let's try it versus a mojo-inspired sugar salt rub overnight. Did you try a, a Cuban roast pork yeah, just by it. itself yeah. when you were in Tampa, not on a sandwich, just like, yeah. just roast pork? Okay, so not... is that the general practice? People just put it in an acidic marinade and leave it there for like a time, and then this is how it always tastes. Yeah, but this is better but this is better. Ryan has a really big heart. He is an incredibly supportive partner in these things. He wants it right. Honestly, it was something that I thought of immediately when I got this recipe, but as a group, we decided it was not traditional and we were trying to stay very close to what was traditional. We had a lot of people to make happy and if I didn't have a very strong argument to diverge from that, I wasn't gonna do it. So this is covered, 450. Yes. This is also 450, but uncovered. Mm. So obviously getting more height on this one, which is nice. And the crumb is still good, but this one is spreading out wider rather than as tall. So we should consider a few different options. Well, I feel like the slashing, I'm a little nervous about because I feel like people, like I wasn't going super deep. I know, I watched that. So I feel like people would be inclined to like, really like get in there like, yeah. I can I can say go like a quarter of an inch yeah, we deep do say like some kind of shallow uh, and go inch pretty shallow but I think it might still be a problem so you said one at 450 which is what I'm temp I've been doing yeah I mean if you want to start at the baseline I would do one at 450 exactly like you're doing but with a, only a 30 minute rise okay. after after shaping yeah and that could be your like kind of baseline okay um then and, number, I'm, sorry, am I slashing these? Because at one point yeah, you said what, but, maybe hold back. Yeah, I mean, but maybe just make a real effort to, to just be Go very, very light. Very light. Cecilia is doing a great, great job trying to manage both these recipes. That said, you know, we're just a week away from deadline. Uh, I'm not sure she's going to hit both of them. And then when she gets done with the pork and the bread, you know, uh, she's got to focus on the sandwich, which seems like it's going to be pretty easy, easy and straightforward, but we've got to start making them and start getting through the process and figure out if there are any hurdles to, to kind of get over. She's got to stay focused on it and make sure every test counts from this point on. Oh, Jesus. You built the sandwich the upside down. Oops. That's okay. I don't even know how many matches this is by now. One, two, three, four. 